tonight. A Duran World Pride Month Spotlight Event. Coloring COVID-19. Featuring AJ Brown, Joseph Taylor, Ayanna Huffington, Philip Johnson, Jamari Harrison, Sheldon Steele II, Monty Venus, Stevie Derrick, Terrence Keith. Real stories, real experiences, real resources. Coloring COVID-19 begins now. COVID-19 has been deemed a global pandemic, which has swept through the world, leaving many stricken with limited options and opportunities, especially in the Black community. From loss of income, school closings, and reduced access to legal protection, many members of the LGBTQ community have been left with stress in their daily lives. Tonight, I wanted to spotlight the effect COVID-19 has had on the Black LGBTQ community and their mental health. I have asked brave Black creatives to share their experiences with this pandemic. Listen to their stories. COVID has affected my daily life by obviously restricting me to the house. Before the pandemic, I work as a teaching artist, fitness professional, teach in schools, and I also worked at a bar. So all those things clearly can't do. But mentally, I have, thank God, been able to stay afloat and stay sane. It's hard some days, but, um, I'm a real big believer in my faith and God has really brought me so far and he's my peace in the time of chaos. So physically it has restricted me to the house. And I also have a great therapist. Shout out to Shane and the work at Gay Men of African Descent in Brooklyn because they are a great resource for black gay men, black men in general, um, great resource for the community and therapy I highly COVID really came out of nowhere. I had the feeling that 2020 would be that year and uh, COVID-19 came in in March and just like it just took me to places that I really didn't expect to go and and, and you had to move so fast because again you didn't know exactly what the, the, the virus was going to be or what it was going to do and then when you started to see people die I was just like oh my god like you know and home life has been like everyone's been in one space it's made everyone like on edge because we can't go outside I have a mother whose immune system is compromised so we have to be extremely careful if we have to even go out for essentials it's made it really really complicated to live on a day-to-day -day. like i really wish that COVID never came around i wish it was never here according to harvard health publishing minorities in the u.s face many challenges during this pandemic especially within the black community in efforts to understand this issue some states have assembled task forces to conduct studies of the health disparities and to address the rising death toll. It's kind of made me be able to really kind of self-reflect and think back, I want to say, more on the important stuff in life, which is like family and friends, instead of the crazy schedules that I was on at first. I've been really sitting on a lot of stuff. It was more of, you know, I would have these ideas, but I would have either no way or no motivation to make it happen. It definitely did stifle the productivity of my creativity. Um, but it didn't stop the ideas from coming. Working on your own individual creative projects and just being wanting to like have the, the zeal to want to create was very hard for me in the beginning. I am the most unmotivated in my creativity, the most. I see people making content like you, I see like everyone putting out stuff, but like I can't bring myself to do it. Is this like a weird time to put out content because of everything that's been going on? Or do I do it because of everything that's been going on? Because I'm black, because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a bisexual woman, do I go ahead and put it out and be like, hi, other black bisexual women, I'm here for you? Or is it like, there's enough doing it, so like, I don't have to put anything else. I feel like COVID has definitely affected my creativity, that I have so much time in my room, so much time at home, time to myself. I'm not at work anymore, thankfully. <laughs> so I have time to just like think and create and soak in all this inspiration that's been coming out, these songs, this music, music videos. Like I get inspiration from a lot of things. Looking at, out the window at a tree gives me inspiration for a photo shoot, you know? So it's been a lot of inspiration and ideas getting jotted down and poems being written. I have my hand in a lot of different pots and I love creating, like it's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> like I, I live to create. So this time to like hone in on that has been beautiful. Like I can't wait till 
things open back up or things get back to normal so I can shoot how I want to and collab with other creatives and just make the art that I want to make. Um, I'll say that COVID kind of uh, affected my creativity in the best way because I've taken the initiative to make sure that my indie artist spotlight uh, segment that I do on uh, Instagram live and I do a lot of promo for indie artists. Um, I finally put my foot down and wasn't as lazy um, and I put my all into creating this project and now it's blooming and it's amazing. I'm having a lot of people hit me up. I think it really forced me to sit down and like look at what am I good at and see how I can better myself at what I'm good at. Um, COVID, what have I missed out due to COVID? Good question. Um, I miss out on traveling the world. I had, I'm talking about five or six plane tickets lined up, ready to go travel for the summer, seeing, going to see my aunt in the UK, going to see some cousins in Australia, like seeing the world before I had to come back and like, you know, go full fledged in my theater work and my career. But I travel a lot and so COVID in Interrupting that definitely forced me to dig deep in order to not feel negative. So that's part of why I have to do my self-care because as an adventurous type of person, my trips are usually a part of my self-care. So I would say COVID has made me miss out on that. It's just made me miss out on, you know, some time to be young and at the club, but you know, that's fine. That'll be back. COVID has missed out on me being able to do some of my pitch meetings in person, which is important for me. So the pitching uh, stage for my show has just kind of gotten a little bit messed up, but it's been okay because with getting able to work so hard on all of my other projects, I've had a good amount of time to be flexible. At first, I was feeling a little bit in despair and you know hopeless and scared about what was going to happen next. But I ended up channeling a lot of this time into my creativity and I felt like I got to get back in touch with who I was as a kid by spending so much time alone and at home because it kind of felt in a way like childhood during like a summer break when you would be at home and you would just have to find ways to make it fun. I had plans to go to Broccoli Fest in May and that got pushed back to October. Plans to go to Louisiana, or New Orleans. I think it was for 4th of July weekend. That's obviously canceled because you know, Black Lives Matter too. <laughs> I think also like I was, like I said, I was like really heavy into fitness prior to uh, COVID and I lost a significant amount of weight and everything. And it kind of like pushed back my fitness journey because there's no more gyms and it's like hard to have motivation just sitting down and within these four walls. I know that now we're in um, June, which is Pride Month. I was hoping to go to Pride this summer. Oh my gosh, I love going to Pride. I feel like every day should be Pride or every day is a Pride day. Like we all celebrate Pride every day or we all should celebrate Pride every day, you know? As far as like whether it's wearing the colors or just being gay as hell and being proud of that. like. It don't matter. Yeah, I'm always at Pride. I love Pride. I think that's the one time of year where I can be as gay as I want to be and not be ashamed of it. Um, not to say that I live in a world where I'm ashamed of it, but I just feel like that's the moment where we can be the freest that we need to be um, and be around people who are just like us. So yeah, I probably had the plans to do this day party that they uh, throw every year. Uh, Kid Fury throws a party I tend to go to um, during the summer. It's called 305 Live, or Live 305 or however the title goes. Um, so I was, uh, I was thinking about attending that. Pride the parade probably tip around there. All the events that they, they do around New York, I was going to attend. So yeah, COVID has canceled all of that. I really wish it was the way that it used to be, but unfortunately we had to take the safety precautions and keep ourselves safe and do the social distancing. I love Pride. I'm a very proud person and who I am, my heritage, where I come from. So I was definitely going to attend the Pride festivities in New York, but there are virtual ways that we are finding ways to celebrate Pride. I show my pride in who I am every day just by being myself. So. Although we can't physically be there and parade around, we have more important matters at hand, beating this pandemic, Black Lives Matter. You know, I'd rather be out here protesting for equality and my people, unfortunately, than having to be celebratory and parade around for five. Well, I already came out to my parents, which 
may have been new, but now it's like a coming out to my family because all of them are finding out, which I don't like, first of all. I don't like when people say they find out that I'm bi. No one finds out anything. It's not a secret. I've been been out since I was 16 years old. If you didn't know, you're just too ignorant to ask me or to see the signs. Anyways. Living your authentic self as a queer person or a trans person or whatever you identify as is a celebration of pride regardless. Um, we don't need these parties and events to celebrate our life. My family now is discovering that I'm bisexual, so now it's like a conversation of religion and all that. And then my girlfriend is probably gonna also eventually come out to their parents, so that's gonna be a thing. So pride is being celebrated by rediscovering our sexuality now through our family. So. I think that's a celebration, kind of in itself. How I celebrate it is I definitely put more, I say brighter, brighter colors into my pictures. And I definitely, you know, more pinks and blues and stuff or whatever, however I do it. And I definitely like to present it more through my art. I definitely was planning to attend 2020 Pride. I love Pride. My first Pride I went to was in San Francisco when I was 20 in 2015 and I'm sad to not be able to go to Pride but I definitely have found ways to celebrate Pride from within my own home. Part of it is through my blog and podcast. Homo sex, bi sex, asex, queer sex I don't give a fuck if you ain't giving me sex Poly sex, semi sex, demi sex, pan sex Love yourself, just wrap it up with latex Thank you for tuning in to Philly Speaks Podcast It is Pride Month 2020 I'm Philly And get ready to brighten your day I've had pride features or we had pride discussions on my podcast. So that's been positive and just through social media and interacting with people and dealing with some of the things going on. That's kind of helped me to get some pride this year. My first pride was actually last year. I went to New York City Pride. It was a beautiful experience, beautiful people, beautiful energy. Honestly, I've been learning a lot about pride because of being stuck in the house and seeing it being spread on social media, which is a useful way to use social media. It was New York Pride we were gonna go to, then London Pride, we we're gonna go to Charlotte, Greensboro. We were like five Prides back to back because it would have been my girlfriend's first time going to Pride, like my seventh time going to Pride. I am a very proud ally to the LGBTQ plus community. I've gone every year for the past, I wanna say five, six years and I've always had fun, I've always had a blast, and I just love seeing all of the love and the creativity and the support that Pride brings in, into one area. I definitely will be happy when Pride is back next year. We're gonna go ahead and speak that into existence. The pandemic will fade off, so. <laughs> you gotta just show your Pride in a different way this year. It's okay. We know that, as in all emergencies, the most marginalized are also the most at risk. The coronavirus outbreak um, impacted the trans community because a lot of us, we are um, doing drag shows or bartenders or working in restaurants or engaging in survival sex works. This kind of um, presents a challenge for us to sustain and to kind of keep those wages up that we were making before. I think about how these people are more at risk of contracting COVID-19 and they also could have some comorbidities that could make them possibly succumb to this virus. A lot of the times there isn't a lot of healthcare providers who are knowledgeable and providing competent and affirming healthcare to transgender and gender non-conforming people. A lot of times if you don't have a job that offers insurance, then you may not qualify for some of the insurance that is out there.
This is a time for us to come together as a community. Reach out to your loved ones, check in on friends, and take care of yourself. There has been a huge response from the greater trans community. I do see a lot of fundraisers, a lot of GoFundMe's, a lot of us taking care of each other. And if this pandemic can show us anything, it can show us that when we work together, we can get so much done. LGBTQ mental health matters. Black lives matter, especially in times like today. If you or someone you know is struggling to adjust to the new normal, take a breath and reach out to someone close to you. I have provided links to various COVID-19 resources made specifically for the LGBTQ community in the description box. I hope you are keeping safe in this time. We will get through this. Never stop fighting for your mental health or your human rights. Thank you to all the brave guests featured on tonight's special, and thank you for watching. Happy Pride Month. My plans did get messed up though. <laughs> I don't remember what I had planned for Pride, but I know I had a lot of sickening outfits I wanted to show, but I can't. Beautiful experience, beautiful people, beautiful energy, beautiful, beautiful energies. But I'm telling you, the most I do when it comes to dancing is like my roommates and I record. Like I just, the other day we try to learn K-pop just for the fun of it because we were like, right. Um, because like I said, I was in the middle of a show, so all the energy went somewhere. First it went to my feet, and then it finally came back up to the brain, darling. So I don't see myself as strong as I was, so then I get unmotivated to post anything, to dance. I'm like, no, girl, you look like a limp noodle. You need to go sit down. COVID has definitely opened or opened my eyes to the creative beast within, even though I already knew that I had, you know, some talent in there. I believe that's the end of the questions. I think that's really it. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. Bye. Yeah.